devotion where we share this one thing from our revised common lectionary for Sunday, March the 13th. My name is Pam Maston. I'm one of the associate pastors here at First Presbyterian Church of Fort Lauderdale. And thank you so much for joining me today. When I was a hospital chaplain, I visited a lot of patients. And while I don't remember all of them, some I do, like Rosie, not her real name. Rosie had been fine prior to coming to the hospital, or so she thought. What brought her into the hospital was actually a cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest is a serious heart condition, and the word arrest means to stop or bring to a halt. In cardiac arrest, the heart ceases to beat. It prevents blood flow to the organs, and this can be fatal without immediate treatment. If anyone shows signs of cardiac arrest, such as loss of consciousness or loss of detectable pulse, you should dial 911 immediately. Well, in Rosie's case, someone had. I met the family and the patient in the ER and followed them throughout Rosie's hospital stay. After being put on life support, she was transferred to the ICU and after a few days, thankfully, she woke up. As the patient was taken off life support, I happened to be at the bedside when the nurse explained what had happened. Rosie had had a cardiac arrest at home. Her husband had called 911 and started chest compressions and EMS had taken over when they arrived. Well, this was all too much to process for Rosie and she didn't remember any of it. So she asked some clarifying questions. So I died, Rosie asked. The nurse replied, yes, actually you did, but your husband and medical professionals got your heart going and brought you back to life. If you met Rosie today, she would probably understand what you were saying if you said you were dead, because she was. In our lectionary reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, Paul starts out with these three words. You were dead. Paul is referring to the pre-Christian life. Now, the Ephesians may have asked some clarification clarifying questions too because they didn't look like they were dead and they probably didn't feel like they were dead. But this was Paul's assessment of one's life outside of Christ. What gives you life is this one thing in verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Did you hear it? This is not your own doing. You were dead and the dead cannot save themselves. Only grace can raise the dead. Only grace gives us the access to the saving work of Jesus Christ. Only grace can do that. It has nothing to do with you. Rosie did nothing to save herself, and it was only by the grace of God that she is alive. And she wept when she realized that she was dead, but now she's alive. She wept tears of joy, tears of gratitude. Friends, how shall we respond with the news that God's grace is a gift? Our lives in Christ are gifts from God. As we journey through Lent, we remember on this fourth Sunday of Lent that only by the grace of God, even when we were dead in sin, we were made alive through Christ, only by the grace of God. This is a wonderful reminder, even as we journey to the cross. Well, the reason I remember Rosie is because she kept coming back to the hospital to visit even after she was discharged. She wanted to be sure to thank the medical professionals for saving her life. 
She wanted to give credit to the women and men who nursed her back to a life of joy and gratitude. Friends, during this Lenten season, we are reflecting on our own shortcomings as we seek to draw closer to God. And in addition, let's express our gratitude to God every day. Rosie was dead and so were we. But now we have been saved by grace and are alive in Christ. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Stay healthy and we'll see you on Sunday.